with the recent announcements from Northwest Nazarene and the Board of Trustees about the review process of layoffs and recommendations for the future, I thought it would be wise for me to make this video as a response. I've chosen not to speak publicly in the previous weeks, months, even years. And there are several things I would like to say now, so please bear with me uh, if this video goes a little long. These past years, months, weeks especially, have been incredibly difficult for me, for my family members, for my colleagues, for friends, for folks who have been concerned about this situation literally around the world. In my family, we've had a lot of sleepless nights the last couple of years, lost weight, been under stress, and done a lot of crying. It's been very hard for us. If I could point to what I thought was the underlying or fundamental issue amongst a whole lot of reasons for why I'm standing here in front of the camera today, I think the fundamental issue is about change and asking the big, most difficult questions of our lives. I have been very public about pursuing those kinds of big and difficult questions. And at times I have pro proposed solutions that some uh, find challenging, some find uncomfortable, some find dissatisfying. I think this is part of what my ministry ought to be and frankly what it means to be a Christian living in a new era, asking questions in new ways. But even asking difficult questions seems to be hard for some people. And offering new answers can be also challenging for them. I obviously can't know all things, but I suspect that fundamentally many of my detractors and critics are not interested and willing to explore the hard questions and be open to the difficult answers that sometimes are proposed. As I see it then, the ultimate source of the conflict is this clash of how we ought to address the pressing questions of our time. As I said, these have been really super difficult days for so many of us, my family and I especially. And one of the main reasons I want to make this video is to take an opportunity to say a really big, deep, sincere thank you to so, so many people who have worked hard, sent us notes of encouragement, advocated, done things far above and beyond what would be expected to be supportive. Thank you. Thank you so very much. As the news of my layoff became widely disseminated, I received literally hundreds of letters from former students encouraging me, thanking me. Some of them said that they remain in the church because of my influence. Others said they have come to believe in God or walk the Christian life because they claim my influence. And of course, it's hard to, that's one of the greatest compliments a person can ever receive. And so I want to thank you who have sent me all those kinds of notes. Um, they've meant so much and they've, they've sustained my wife and family and I and my colleagues during this incredibly difficult time. Scholars from around the world, from both the Church of Nazarene, evangelical circles, mainline circles, even non-Christian scholars, have done all kinds of things to support me and belief that uh, academic freedom needed to be supported. Many of them wrote personal letters, many signed letters. Those things mean so much because I realize that I have such great support from 
the scholarly community. So I want to say thank you to those people. Um, my colleagues here at NNU have been incredibly special. Let me start first with just my colleagues here in the School of Theology and Christian Ministries. Man alive, they have been just amazing in the way they have supported me by advocating, some of them in private, some of them in public, some of them through working through policy issues, some of them working with pastors or advocating for me in the public sphere. A few of them have even, I believe, placed their own jobs on the line to do what they thought was right for me and for the good of NNU, and I'm incredibly grateful to them. There are also friends who have done things in terms of uh, advocating for me and supporting me and my family in the broader social media world. The Support Tom Ward and NNU page has been an incredibly valuable resource of information, source of encouragement, information sharing. I wanna thank those who have been leading in that uh, what you've done is not only helpful to me, but I truly believe helpful for the university and for the future of the church. Thank you so much. Many wrote blogs, many wrote in letters to trustees or to the president. Um, there have been folks advocating in so many different ways, not only for me, but for the whole process and what this, this whole scenario means for education, for the Church of the Nazarene, and frankly, for the church in general. Thank you. Thank you so much. The person that deserves my greatest thanks, however, is my wife. She has, she has suffered a great deal and cries a great deal and has been with me through this. It would be easy for a spouse in a situation like I am in to insist that their husband or wife leave to avoid the conflict. And my wife, although it's been very difficult for her, did not insist on that. My daughters as well. I have an incredible family. My wife is on a wild adventure with me, my kids as well, and I thank them so much for helping me in this situation. Let me say a few brief words about the announcement from the Board of Trustees and the details from the review committee. I was hopeful that I would be reinstated fully and indefinitely. I expected the review to come back much differently than it did. I was surprised that I was not reinstated. I thought that given the documentation I and others had provided that the outcome would be different. I'm quite surprised. The announcement from the Board of Trustees rightly says that I am being reinstated only temporarily. I'm grateful that I've been given some time to find a new position and that my reinstatement, although part-time, will mean that I have some uh, financial means in the coming years. I accept the agreement that we worked out. It was my hope for a different outcome, but given various circumstances and especially the review team report I'm satisfactory with the settlement that we have agreed upon. Now let me talk a little bit about the future. I am certain there is much work still to be done. I am optimistic about the leadership of Joel Pearsall who has been given the position on an interim basis. I would not be surprised if Joel was president at NNU far past the two-year um, stint. Joel is a person of integrity. He strikes me as someone who will work toward shared governance. He strikes me as someone who will allow faculty to use their gifts and abilities not to micromanage, 
someone who has uh, will keep his word and will be a president with integrity. I am optimistic about the future of the university with Joel as the president. There's much work he and, the co and my colleagues must do. I've already mentioned the issue of academic freedom. This is an ongoing question and issue, especially in Christian colleges and universities. Um, how do we affirm the freedom academic schol and scholars needs to pursue their research and investigate questions of importance and yet also maintain uh, our allegiance to the faith community and our Christian perspective. The saying most often cited in this respect is one that I like, which says that in es essential things we should seek unity. In non-essential things we should allow liberty or freedom, but in all things we need to act lovingly. I think in the case of Northwest Nazarene University and other Christian universities like it, we need to interpret that in ways that allow for a great deal more academic freedom than what is allowed in so many places. When I look at my own situation, it seems to me I am strongly in the very core and center of the essential beliefs of the faith. I not only believe the essentials of the Christian tradition, but also stand firmly upon the articles of faith in the Church of the Nazarene. In my case, however, it appears as though my interest and in exploration in non-essentials has what made so many people nervous. We need, as an institution and as a Christian community, to support and encourage all people to allow for the kind of exploration and engagement with difficult and challenging questions that scholars are called to do. Academic freedom is important and my colleagues and the president of NNU as well as the trustees now have a task to put together policy to support and encourage that academic freedom. There's also an issue of integrity and leadership in the wider Christian community. One of the aspects of the current conflict that um, I thought, thought was particularly helpful is that the questions raised about my situation in particular or in and you in general brought to mind issues of integrity, honesty, um, transparency amongst leaders in relation to the community. I don't want to speak specifically about this situation, but generally speaking, there's not enough transparency amongst leaders. There's not enough uh, honest and open dialogue about difficult decisions. My hope is that the conversations that have emerged in light of what's been happening in my life and at NNU will expand that conversation about what it means to have the kind of transparency, integrity, and honesty that Christian leaders must have in relation not only to the Christian community, but to the broader world. I recognize that these last few years, I personally have become a symbol, a symbol of a variety of things, a symbol of academic freedom, a symbol of faculty administration conflict, a symbol of scholarly um, and scholarly laity engagement and the conflicts that can often come there. One of the things that I think I've come to symbolize is a vast divide between people, not only in uh, the region in which I work, but also within Christianity more generally. And that divide is over what I mentioned earlier, the capacity for change or willingness to change in light of the really difficult, hard questions that we now face in our generation. On one side of that divide, generally more younger people sit and they seek the kind of change and engagement with those difficult questions that I've come to symbolize. 
On the other side, it seems to me, at least from my perspective, to be people who are not willing to change some of these uh, central ideas about what it means to be a Christian in light of the world in which we live. Um, somehow, in some way, those sides must engage in a more positive, fruitful, and constructive way. And I want to do what I can to be a part of that conversation, to be a, to be a bridge builder, even though I realize that I symbolize for mostly younger people the chance for change and symbolize for this other set of people what's gone wrong and what we must maintain. I hope that in some way, as I try to live a life of love, that I can help to bridge that gap so that communication can happen and the divide can be narrowed. Let me bring what has become a rather long video to a conclusion. My reinstatement on a temporary basis means that I will eventually be leaving my position as a professor at Northwest Nazarene University. I do not intend to leave the Church of the Nazarene, but I expect that my next job of being a professor will be at an institution outside the denomination. I look forward to that task and want to make contributions in those areas, but I also want to maintain a voice and a presence in the Church of the Nazarene where I am an ordained elder. I want to help the Church of the Nazarene fulfill her mission in this changing world. I expect the next stages of my scholarly career to be different. I don't know exactly what that means, but I choose to move into the future with optimism and hope, even though I'm disappointed at the moment with what has happened. I believe my best days are still in front of me. At the very core of who I am and who I want to be in the future is love. It's become kind of a slogan since I said early on that no matter what happens to me, I plan to live a life of love. But that's far more than just a slogan in my life. I hope that I have done well in living and being a person of love in the midst of, in the midst of these difficult days. I intend to be a person of love into the future. I will not be bitter. I will not seek revenge. I will be a person of forgiveness, a person who tries to follow the example of love best seen in Jesus Christ. There's much work to be done in my life, in the community, in the denomination, in evangelical world, in the broader Christian tradition. I want to do whatever small part I can do in that task. And I ask that you would pray for me and my family, my colleagues, and all those who, enjoy, who join me in working to establish the kingdom of God that God works through us to establish in this world. Thanks.